All right, so Adam Kaczynski, president, joint CEO of CD Projekt, recently sat down for an interview with Polish news media to discuss Cyberpunk 2077 and CD Projekt in general. There was a lot of interesting details revealed about Cyberpunk 2077, such as their perspective on the game, the upcoming major patch 1.5, which will feature the next-gen updates, the likelihood of CDPR getting acquired, future acquisitions, current projects, work on the first expansion for Cyberpunk, and more. There's a lot to cover in this video, so as always, there will be timestamps for you to jump around as you please. Keep in mind this interview was in Polish, so some things may be lost in translation. But here we go. Almost a year has passed since the highly anticipated release of Cyberpunk 2077. How do you evaluate the game from the perspective at this time? What is its greatest achievement and what has failed? What would the studio change if you could turn back time? Would you wait with the release of the console version for a later time until these versions were better polished? Cyberpunk 2077 is the largest, most ambitious, and by far the most complex project in our 27-year history. We tried to go a step further in almost every aspect, just like we did with every new Witcher game we released. Releasing a game under a new franchise entails many challenges and risks, especially when the concept is so complex. We have brought to life the huge futuristic night city, bustling with life in which non-linear stories of heroes take place. We are proud of many aspects of the game, but as we know, not everything went our way. Nevertheless, the awareness of the cyberpunk brand that we have managed to build is huge, and the game universe, its characters and detail have fans all over the world. We believe that in the long term, Cyberpunk 2077 will be perceived as a very good game, and like our other titles, it will sell for years, especially as the equipment will be more efficient and the game will be improved by us all the time, as well as the version for the latest generation of consoles. Of course, the release taught us a lot. It gave us a kick and motivated us to make changes that will make us perform better in the future. So in general, I think that's a pretty well-rounded response for a PR response. And I think the only really bold statement in there, as a lot of journalists are putting it, is that they think that the game is going to be perceived as very good in the long term. Of course, this is not something that people that hate the game want to hear, but the thing is, it's already starting to look that way. But I'll discuss that more later in the video. That said, I truly do hope that he's being honest when he says that they've learned from the mistakes, but only time will tell. I think patch 1.5 will end up being a pivotal moment for the game and CD Projekt as a whole. As if the update does a good job of addressing remaining major bugs, fixing up some features such as NCPD behavior, improving replayability, even if it's just with something like New Game Plus, and improving optimization for consoles, the game will be on the right track to start receiving meaningful content additions with the paid expansions. You mentioned the further development of Cyberpunk. When will the next updates, additions, and the version for next-gen consoles be released? The postponement of the release for the next-gen version to 2022 was disappointing, and there were mentions that you will miss the good sales time associated with the end of the year. Was it really necessary to postpone the deadline to 2022? Will the release be in the first quarter or later? This year, we will no longer be releasing any updates to the game. We are working intensively on the version for the latest generation of consoles, which will be released in the first quarter of 2022 with a major update patch 1.5. The decision to postpone the next-gen version of Cyberpunk was difficult, but we are convinced that it was right. More so because it clearly resulted from the recommendation of our development team that the quality was as high as possible. So it seems like they're listening to the development team that the next-gen versions needed more time, and it will be releasing alongside the next big update, that being patch 1.5. This is our first solid confirmation that there will be no further updates this year, as it was only previously assumed based off the roadmap that featured no patches for the rest of 2021. And this is actually very good news that they're pushing the next-gen update to next year, as they could have rushed it out for the holidays, just like they did with the Cyberpunk 2077 release, as holiday sales are insane. So I think this is a very good sign for the next-gen updates and patch 1.5. The most recent update, patch 1.31, released on September 14th. So it has already been over two months, and patch 1.5 isn't coming until Q1 of 2022. So that will mean that the patch will have been in development for a total of four to six months, depending on the release date. That will be the longest wait for a patch yet, including the wait for the patch following the security breach that they got hit with earlier this year. And that will mean a significant amount of development time for this update. So it should be quite interesting to see just how large it is. I wouldn't expect any large content additions, but I do fully expect them to address a lot of smaller complaints about the game and likely bring more free DLC as well. Hopefully something more significant than patch 1.3. Let's move on to your second flagship title. The Witcher. How is the work on the version of The Witcher 3 for new consoles going? 
Was it necessary to postpone the release to the second quarter of 2022? Analysts indicate that your company will not be able to take full advantage of the upcoming second season of Netflix's The Witcher series. Work on the version of The Witcher 3 for new generations of consoles is carried out by our proven partner, Saber Interactive, of course in cooperation with our studio. We finished the production of The Witcher 3 almost seven years ago. Since then, the technology has dramatically advanced and new solutions have appeared. Therefore, updating the game to the latest consoles takes more time than we expected. We are happy that as a part of the updates, we will be able to offer players something new in the form of free DLC. As previously announced, the additional content will be inspired by the Netflix series. So the Witcher 3 Next Gen updates is being taken on by Saber Interactive, who have most recently been known for the work on the Witcher 3 for Nintendo Switch, World War Z, Crisis Trilogy Remasters, Halo Anniversary Editions, Kingdom Come Deliverance on Switch, and multiple upcoming titles. That being Evil Dead the Game, A Quiet Place, and an unannounced Painkiller title. A lot of which seem to have good to great reception. Not anything truly significant, but definitely a team that can get the job done well, if given the time and resources. As for the free DLC, I wouldn't expect anything meaningful in that department, but maybe they'll surprise us with something more than just armor and weapons. Are there any plans to add another third large IP to the studio's portfolio? Or will the group's operations continue to be based on the Witcher and Cyberpunk brands in the coming years? We are currently focused on our two franchises. Both have enormous potential, so one of our strategic goals is to start working on AAA projects, large high-budget productions, in parallel with our IPs, which is expected to happen next year. So they're working towards developing the Witcher and Cyberpunk titles in parallel starting next year. I question if this means the new studio is working on a more ambitious title than initially expected, but as of right now, we just know that they're either working on The Witcher or Cyberpunk. We don't know what scale that game will be, if it will be a full release of either, could maybe even be Cyberpunk multiplayer and CD Projekt Red decided that they wanted to work on The Witcher 4. There are a lot of possibilities here, but we'll have to wait and see. CD Projekt Red really does need to get parallel development underway, as this is something that will greatly benefit them and fans. The last thing we need is another Fallout and Elder Scrolls rotation, with up to and over 10 year gaps in major releases for a franchise. Skyrim was the last main entry in the Elder Scrolls franchise, and that came out over 10 years ago. It's no wonder why it's been re-released so many times. Not only does it still sell well, but they need to keep the franchise in the public eye, especially when the Elder Scrolls 6 is still years off, as leaving a popular franchise dormant for over a decade isn't usually a wise decision. And I think this is something we'll even see from Bethesda Game Studios moving forward. How many people does your group currently employ? What is the breakdown of the number of people working on individual projects? How will it change next year? We currently employ over 1,200 people. There are approximately 660 developers in CD Projekt Red Studios. Less than a third of them work on updates and the next-gen version of Cyberpunk 2077. Every month, more and more people are working on the first edition to Cyberpunk, while the rest are working on Gwent and other projects. Spoko Studio, belonging to the group, with 50 developers on board, is working on the Witcher Monster Slayer, while the newly acquired studio The Molasses Flood has started work on a project based on one of our IPs. So this is an interesting update to that less than a third are now working on updates and and the next-gen version for Cyberpunk, and that more and more are starting to be moved onto the first expansion of the game. This could either be them jumping the gun on pulling people off of updates, or them having confidence in the next major patch. I think the game is ready and in need of a large expansion, so if patch 1.5 is sizable, the game is on the right path, and things will look quite different for the game in the next few months. As for the Molasses Flood, I have a full video on them linked in the description. Have you recently started to consolidate the market? Do you have a lot of money in your accounts? Will there be more acquisitions? Are discussions on this underway? And if so, are larger studios also involved? Domestic or rather foreign? As a part of the strategy update, we announced greater activity in the M&A area that being mergers and acquisitions, which we confirmed in recent months with two transactions. Both fit perfectly into our development plans. The Vancouver team joined CD Projekt Red, while the Molasses Flood studio is working on a game as a part of one of our franchises. We do not rule out further transactions of this type in the future. The goal of our acquisitions is to strengthen development teams and obtain additional support in the implementation of our strategy. Therefore, in these types of investments, we are most interested in experience and competence, and we attach great importance to whether a given team will fit into the culture of our group. 
CD Projekt is also indicated as a potential acquisition target. Is the announcement of strategic options in finding an investor or the sale of some shares by existing shareholders not being considered? We have been repeating for years that we plan to remain independent and do not plan to become a part of a larger entity. We are also not looking for a strategic investor. Now, this statement is likely very true. CD Projekt is much larger than a lot of people realize as their market value hovers around and often exceeds that of Ubisoft, making it one of the two most valuable video game companies in Europe. CD Projekt isn't some sort of small fish that can be snatched up easily and would require a massive company such as Microsoft to throw a ridiculous amount of money at them, potentially resulting in a larger acquisition than ZeniMax. I don't see anyone making an acquisition of that size for a company that has two IPs, limited technology, and not many studios. ZeniMax was great because of their infrastructure, technology, and insane amount of IPs. So I just don't see that acquisition happening unless something significant changes. There were provisions in your company's articles of association protection against hostile takeover. Are they still? Yes, there are records that make enemy takeover much more difficult. And this is a great thing to hear as a lot of publicly traded video game companies experience attempts at hostile takeovers. Ubisoft themselves were dealing with the exact situation with Vivendi a few years back. What is happening now in relation to this year's hacking attack on your company? Are there still ongoing proceedings in this case? I guess it currently has the status of in and not against. No charges have been brought against anyone. The proceedings are pending. And for the sake of the investigation, we do not provide detailed information on this subject. And what about lawsuits from US investors that have appeared after the release of Cyberpunk 2077? Does your company perceive these lawsuits as a significant business risk or is there no reason to do so? In August, we filed a motion to dismiss in which we commented on the charges presented in the lawsuit. In the next steps, the plaintiff's representative referred to our request, and then we referred to his letter. These are standard steps in this type of proceedings in the United States. So nothing really significant for either situation. But as for the lawsuit from US investors, I honestly don't see it going anywhere. Finally, please tell me how you view the dividend. Is the management board considering recommending a payout in 2022 or will this year's profits go to reverse capital? It is definitely too early to talk about next year's dividend. The time for analyzing our financial situation and issuing recommendations in this matter will come after the publication of the annual report for 2021. And that wraps up the interview. A lot of interesting details throughout this entire thing, but I think most of you will have probably cared most about the patch 1.5 and the next-gen versions. I think Cyberpunk 2077 has a future and will indeed be perceived as a great game in the long run, as CD Projekt Red expects following the updates, but the game will need to be made more optimized on consoles before that becomes a truly widespread reception. The game has been receiving glowing reviews on PC with the 50% sale, which is currently the platform to get the best experience for the game. That's thanks to the wide range of self-optimization you can do to run it based off of your own hardware. The game is sitting at an 84% for recent reviews, and that's with 22,364 reviews. It has also been selling well across all platforms thanks to the 50% sale. In fact, it has been the top global seller on Steam on and off for the last few days. It's currently holding the number one spot at the time of this video. A lot of new and returning people are getting the game and enjoying it. So the game is doing a lot better than some might want to believe, and for the people that can run it, it's actually a great game. There are most definitely glaring issues that need to be addressed still, but you can have a great game with lacking features and bugs. For example, it has the best story and characters I've experienced in an open world RPG. The game isn't this pile of garbage like some will try to make you believe. There are things it does exceptionally well. Of course, that doesn't excuse the issues, such as the state of the launch on consoles. But too many people have been having their emotions cloud their judgments, and that goes for both sides. Those that blindly hate on the game acting like it does nothing well, and those that act like there are no issues with it. The game does certain things exceptionally well, some things mediocre, and other things terribly. Hopefully, it will only get better with time. And only time will tell. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on everything down in the comment section below. But that's it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please smack that like button down below, subscribe, join the good fight if you haven't already, and ring that bell icon to stay in all of my future videos. It'd be super greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off.